culture of life is about love. But the culture of death is about selfishness. And you are as miserable as you are selfish. And uh, so I want to I want to just look at what are some of the, the ways that, that those selfish attitudes creep into your family life. Um, it's I, a lot of stuff has snuck in since when I was little. Because when I was little, I grew up in a very boring town in Illinois, and there was nothing to do, and we were all together all the time. We had dinner together every night. Um, I, I used to feel like you didn't really know someone until you'd really been bored <laughs> with, um, not bored with them, but uh, bored alongside them. You know what I mean? Um, but now nobody has to ever be bored. Nobody has to ever reflect. Nobody has to ever have a thought. All they have to do is react to all the busyness. And very few people have family dinners or spend any time together at all. My husband went to Guatemala a, a week ago in between his back incident and his knee incident, he went to Guatemala. <laughs> and for some reason, when he came back, he was really sweet to me. <laughs> I, I mean, not like right when he got back, like he was, like he resolved on the entire airplane ride, I'm going to be nice no matter what. <laughs> like the next day, he was still nice. He seemed like he really liked me. And it really got my attention. And I, I really thought maybe I might try liking him. <laughs> my, my husband lately, he said that he, he had this um, epiphany. And when the, what he start, is, tells people now is that when your spouse is doing that same old thing that really irritates you, or they're nagging you about how you're not meeting their needs or whatever it is, instead of immediately defending yourself, which is what we always do, take that as a, as a little alarm that they're not, get, that, that they're not feeling loved. I think that a lot of times we feel so much like the unit of measure is ourselves. I have to defend myself. We don't think, I have to defend my marriage. And so when someone lets us know that, that they perceive trouble or they're not, they're not happy with how things are going, we immediately retreat to ourselves and justify, well, I did this, 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 and this. What's your problem? <laughs> Instead of, of saying, well, you know, he, maybe he doesn't feel loved. So, you know, I think that there really is, is no love without irritation. And that's just the plain truth of it. So you just got to kind of get over it. My husband Bill says that when he sees people in marriage therapy, he's, he's real hardcore. He tells people, first of all, if you want to work with me, you turn off the TV for three months. And then we'll see how you get. You know, these people will come into him surprised that they don't seem to have any relationship. And they'll say, well, how many TVs do you have in the house? Well, there's one in the kitchen. There's one in the bedroom. There's one in the living room. You know, you walk, people are together in the, the house where they're all just tuned into something else. And um, so he, he, not only does he tell them they have to turn off the TV, uh, but he tells them they have to give without expecting anything in return. And a lot of people say, yeah, well, I know that irritates him. I, you know, I, I would be willing to change that if he did something for me. And they think it's supposed to be this 50-50 deal. Well, it isn't a 50-50 deal. It's just, it's a hundred. You have to give a hundred. And I used to study economics, and there's a concept called uh, opportunity cost. And opportunity cost is what else you could have spent your money on. And I think, you know, in marriage, what else? Instead of this fighting and these, this coldness and these grudges, you know, if somebody would have just said, I'm sorry. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been like that, where it's just a real hard nut to crack, and then somebody seems to kind of give a little bit, and then it's like, <gasps> 10 minutes later, your whole life has changed.
there's no need for keeping small. Just lay it on down and shut the door. Lay it on down and let it go. Your father or mom still loves you so. So there's no need for alibi. Just lay it on down and close your eyes. You got it. She said, swear.